I just want to jump into something that has top of mind for everybody. So we, we, we've all witnessed what has happened to George Floyd. And the, the concern I have with that case is there's a tremendous amount of people. It's almost like religion where you have, you know, you have the God and you have the, the Judas, the, the, you know, the person that everyone wants to just see hung, right? And there's yeah. a mob mentality around it. And there's no doubt we saw massive injustice. There's no question that that happened. But the, the thing that concerns me, and, and the reason I wanted to talk to you is because you have an emphasis on policy, right? And so when I watched the George Floyd video, was it policy that failed him, the entire Minneapolis Police Department, or was it wrongdoing by one individual? Right. And so when, when you watch that, what do you think about as it relates to police brutality and how this has just opened up everything? Yeah, look, I think it's a combination of things, but I think, you know, it's hard to walk away from the underlying fact that racism has been so embedded in the criminal justice system and in policing in this country, right? And you have to kind of walk back a little. And I know people get very uncomfortable when I say this. But the reality is the origins of policing in this country, in many parts of the country, are really a product of slavery, right? And it was, you know, the early iterations of policing in many parts of the South, especially, were to work there to make sure slaves were, runaway slaves were returned, right? And slaves were punished. And then after the uh, Civil War, then, you know, there were people that were unhappy with the outcome and they wanted to make sure that you kept vestiges of slavery. So then policing was more formalized around really maintaining a, a very oppressive process when it came to race. And then really the evolution of that, you know, it has been one of policing always being not necessarily in the best light when it comes to the African-American community and other poor communities. And I think you sort of then get into the last 30, 40 years with a war on drugs, which is really, in many ways, there was a war on poor people, and a war on black and brown people, because those were the ones that started being incarcerated over and over again for things that, quite frankly, would go on in other communities without any, any consequences. And policing then again, you know, became part of that war, right? And we militarized our policing. You know, it's, it's funny that uh, uh, recently the, the LA Times had a piece and they said, you know, back in the 80s, when the, the, the crack epidemic started to surface, we were at a fork as a country and, you know, and, the, and drug problems were building up in other parts of the world. And some countries decided to go into the public health approach to drug use and mental health. We actually took the other fork and we decided we're going to militarize our police, we're going to hire more cops and we're... So we went in the rampage, you know, of hiring more cops, you know, then, you know, the Clinton administration came in, hired 100,000 cops, more prosecutors, more money into policing, more militarization of policing, you know, uh, more punitive, more prisons and all that stuff. And we, I mean, we went off the scale to the point that as a nation, we incarcerate more people than any other nation in the world, not only per capita, but in raw numbers. And we have become more punitive than probably most other parts of the world. And we got very comfortable in that, that endeavor. And, you know, district attorneys and chief of police definitely became based on their tough and crime attitudes. And I think a lot of that really was visited upon the African-American community. And unfortunately, and I, and I always try to be very careful because I know that the majority of the men and women in uniform are good people, but you don't want to paint it with a broad brush, but the problem in policing in this country is you have a few people that are very racist, and then, you know, the rest of us, we all have our own implicit biases, right? It doesn't matter what race you are, right? But then in policing, you have sort of this, this blue wall, if you will, that it's, it's almost heresy to report criminal behavior, bad behavior by another cop. So even cops know that this person here may be bad news, and he or she is a racist and all that other stuff but no one reports it, right? And I think that what you saw in the George Floyd case was the, the quicentennial problem with American policing. Here's a man that is dying in front of you, right? I mean, we can all see this happening. You even got one officer is talking about, oh, geez, I thought of, you know, this thing about positional asphyxia. Is, is he really breathing, right? And they stand by and they don't do anything at all, right? And this man dies. And there is not only the man that actually does this horrendous it's a murder, there's no other way to put it. 
But you got you got these other cops that are complicit by doing nothing about it. And you know, while this is in video and we all see it and we get horrified, I can tell there are hundreds of other, thousands of other cases that have happened in the last few years that do not capture attention. And, and we just can't walk away from racism in the system. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.